So, who here has heard of hacking? Excellent. Okay. Hands up if you believe hacking is a criminal offence. A few. Hands up if you believe hacking is for good. And in between? Yes, you're on the money. Unfortunately, the Oxford Dictionary defines hacking as, number one, using a computer to gain unauthorised access. Which is what e Edward Snowden did. So, that was arguably criminal, we don't know the answer yet, but he's in a lot of trouble with America. On the other side of the coin, we've got the image here of my partner Kimmy and I, who are in a competition called GovHack, which is run by the Australian government, where they encourage members of the public to come and hack against the government databases, all of their public data. They want you to take their data and do something wonderful or magnificent with it. In this instance, we were using their data to print 3D objects and wearing dinosaur suits. So, if I was given the chance to redefine hacking and tell the Oxford Dictionary, guys, you're wrong, which they're not going to listen to me, but given the opportunity, I would tell them that a hacker is somebody who combines their ingenuity, a lot of luck, and an incredible amount of persistence to achieve goals that nobody's ever done before. Achieve something new. And for me, the story of how I became a hacker starts in primary school. So, back when I was in primary in the late 80s, yeah, I'm starting to get a few miles on the clock. We bought a computer. Well, my mum and dad bought a computer. Incredible amount of money back then. What a computer's worth today is a joke in comparison. And I was in about grade five or six, and I wondered how computers worked. But the answer was, you can't do that. No one's there to teach you. The internet doesn't really exist yet. But then, one day, I discovered these buttons on the side of the computer case. I pushed them, and it opened the computer case. Mum came home to a brand new computer disassembled across the, the lounge room carpet. I now know carpet is not good for computers, disassembling computers is not good for my mum, and I could actually put the computer back together and it worked. So, that was my first run-in with the law and hacking, and it was a great success. I wasn't allowed to disassemble the computer for quite a few years after that, but nonetheless, we moved on. The next big adventure in hacking I had was in junior high school. So, doing woodwork, if you give me a piece of wood, I will murder it. I will create something abhorrent, something the world is better without. So, rather than doing this to another piece of wood when we were building clocks, I decided I'll just get an old computer card from my collection and I'll combine it with a little clock mechanism. I'm assuming most of you can guess what came next. A nice clock? This is my plan, that's what I expected. I could not have been more wrong. Has anyone got any other ideas what came next? No? Yes? A bomb squad, yes. I had the bomb squad called to my school. <laughs> so, being a standard forgetful student, I'd inadvertently just left the clock sitting on a seat in the main office. I was called into main office on a regular schedule, so my stuff being there wasn't unusual. A clock being there was unusual enough. We're sitting out at lunch, and then police start showing up looking something like this. We put two and two together, and oh. Then we had the question, do I go there and tell them the kind of clock thing is just my clock, or do I keep my head down? Eventually, we went and told them, and just escaped getting punished, because it was an accident. So, after that, I kept my head down, I was quiet. My hacking was not doing me any favours. The next stop was around the end of year 10. By then, I had control of the school network, I knew everything about it. Their IT teacher would ask me for help on IT. They were trying to teach me how to use Microsoft Word. I was teaching them how to access their Edgemail accounts. Um, once the principals figured this out, they decided they had a hacker inside, they decided I was evil, I was going to destroy the world. The reality was, I was on an adventure. I was exploring all of the school networks, all of the computers. I was exploring the internet unrestricted, which, if you've been at school, it's very restricted. So, their, their solution was, you're not allowed to touch a computer ever for the rest of your years at school. So, I did my entire VCE without touching a computer at school. 
I spent my spare time recovering assignments off floppy disks for students. I must have recovered almost hundreds of assignments. Who's had a USB break? Floppy disks were way worse. They were almost guaranteed to fail. And it's always the day before the assignment. And teachers still don't believe you, right? Exactly. So I used to recover them. After that, I went to university. I studied for four years because I really wanted to be a hacker. And it turns out, in industry, if you're paid to be a hacker, they will call you an engineer. <laughs> so straight out of uni, I went into malware research engineering, which who's had a virus on their computer? Yes, exactly. So I used to work to defend against that. We would get viruses. We would have to, A, protect people from them, and B, pull the virus apart, see what makes it tick, and see what it's doing to people. Is it stealing their bank passwords? Is it stealing their Facebook passwords? Is it posting spam off their Facebook account? And we had to find all of this out, and the people who write the viruses didn't really want us figuring it out. So there was an incredible amount of hacking to pull these things apart and see what they did. That took me on an adventure through lecturing video game design development, teaching people how to hack computers to make video games faster and faster. And after that, I kind of got a little tired of just software. I want to do some more hardware, so I moved to Quantum Victoria, which is one of the state science centres. And there, I've been allowed to hack with software and hardware. One of the projects I created was teaching people to build 3D printers. So not teaching amazing engineers to build 3D printers, teaching just general everybody to build 3D printers. So up here on the left, you can see an app I built that helps people build 3D printers called Quantum Prusa. And on the right, you can see a photo montage of 20 teachers we had building 3D printers at the University of Melbourne late last year. So out on the tables, you actually saw a couple of the printers built from that build. Not happy with just hardware hacking and needing more than work was offering, I went and found another project to spend all of my time on. And this was software and network hacking. So who's been at school browsing the internet and found the proxy error, you can't go there, illegal page? Yes, I found it many times. And who's found a way around it? That's your first baby set steps into network hacking. You found a problem and you found a solution, and a solution that obviously the IT people don't know about. So you're already hackers, this is good. But for me, I had a TV show that I needed to move gigabytes of data through that proxy and it was telling me no. So MeTV is a little TV show created by Shane Spence. It's made by special developmental students for special developmental students. And he needed to spread it across the Victorian network to all the other special developmental schools in Victoria. When he spoke to the IT people, they told him, you can't do that. I heard about this through a mutual friend, and I thought, no, when I was in high school, I could do that. So I caught up with them, and two months later, we had MeTV running across the entire department network and across the internet at large. It's now been viewed in countries across the globe, and every day of the school year, a new episode is uploaded by us, sent across the school networks via BitTorrent. I'm sure you've all heard of BitTorrent. It's notorious for spreading pirated movies but it also has legitimate uses, such as MeTV. And then back to work. I was done with software, I needed something else. These 3D printers we're building are worth between $800 and $1,000. They're not exactly cheap. So now, my current project with my mate Dave is, can we build a 3D printer for only $100? The answer is, we still don't know. We spent a month working on it, but we're getting closer and closer. Currently, we're sitting about $95, but there's some pieces not working. So over the next few months, we're going to keep squeezing dollars, keep finding solutions, keep just whittling down the problem. There's the solutions we have in place. Sometimes they're too expensive. So we have to hack away and create a new solution. But you'll need to stay up to date if you want to see where that project goes. My question for you is, are you ready to become a hacker? all of those who've already broken the school proxies, you're on your way. But how do you go from simply tricking the school's networks to someone who actually gets paid to hack? That's a big question, and there's no straight answer, but I will give you as many clues as I can. 
The first one is you need to learn to love eBay and Google. And I'm sure you've all searched eBay, but have you really searched it? There are eBay sites in hundreds of countries. I've bought from eBay in Germany, Hong Kong, Israel. Like, there are so many eBay sites that are much, much cheaper than the Australian eBay. Learn to search eBay really well, and you'll get hardware for a tenth or a twentieth of what you pay in Australia. You can either save the money or do like every other hacker and just buy more stuff, buy more toys, more things to tinker with, more things to break and fix. And then there's the second half, which is searching Google. You've all used Google search, but start looking at the advanced features. Start looking at including phrases, excluding phrases or words. And the better you become at searching Google, the faster you'll find answers to your problems. Because when you're hacking, you're solving a puzzle and you usually don't even know what the answer is. You're trying to find it. And with billions of people on the internet, there'll be thousands of hackers out there who've done pieces of your puzzle. So rather than doing the whole puzzle yourself, find them, find out what they know, use their pieces, and then help them fill in the blanks where they can't solve it. Because one day you will find a problem where you're the only person in the world who can solve it. Like, ha like the internet, there are hacker spaces. There aren't many around Melbourne, but if you're close to one, it's a place where you can physically meet like-minded people and tinker away with hardware, see what they're up to, just and they will infuse you with energy. When you put people who are crazy about the same thing together, like a dance party, they just, it's out of control. It's kind of a little scary, but it's also totally awesome. That's what hacker spaces are to people who like computers, programming, and hardware. They get together, and the ideas that come out are mental, insane, and sometimes really important. But if you can't get to a hacker space, especially in Australia, because our country is so huge, I've been working on a website called Ramp. So it combines robotics, automation, and mechatronics, which is basically everything that hackers do in hardware and software. And we're trying to build this site to allow high school students who want to become a hacker, give them access to experts, technology, information, and websites, everything you need to get started as a hacker, and to find out if this is where you want to go, if you're going to spend the rest of your life breaking things or making things. So next time somebody tells you, you can't do that, what they actually mean is no one can do it yet. And if you're the person that combines the ingenuity, the luck, and the persistence, you just might be the first person to solve that problem in the world. And when you do, that is the best feeling you will ever see. So this brings me to the end of my talk, and I'll just leave you with a quote from Albert Einstein, which is, anyone who has never made a mistake has never tried anything new. And as you go along, you'll learn this more and more. So dream big and don't make clocks. Thank you.